some of the information, but this is my favorite part that I can pass around um, cultures and people can hold them and take a look at them instead of looking at slides. Um, so, I'm just going to reorganize so. so, I mentioned that you know we start with agrobacterium and we do that. We take the plasma DNA and we electroporate it into the agro. And this is what it looks like after we do the electroporation. And the vector, if you're not familiar with it, but on the backbone of that plasma DNA, there's also a selection agent for the bacterium so that when we plate this out onto the medium, say the selection for the bacteria is canamycin as well, we'll put canamycin in the medium so that only the transformed bacteria would grow. If we didn't, we'd have a lawn of agrobacterium growing. And then when we do these, um, you know, when we do the overnight cultures, we take, actually we can even do, we do actually do PCR on a colony. We'll just take a colony, put it into a solution, do PCR to make sure it has um, the vector in it. And then that goes into the liquid mm -hmm. medium, um, and then it goes into a shaker overnight. I'm sorry, what's PCR again? Pardon? What's PCR? PCR? Oh, PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Oh, PCR, chain reaction. <coughs> yeah, so you multiply the Just stop me and ask questions. Uh, we're so used to using jargon, but um, feel free to so PCR analysis. Okay. So you can just pass it around and take a look at it. Um, for this flask, just hold it by the flask itself because sometimes the cap comes loose and it just smells lovely. <laughs> so you know, sometimes if we're not sure if it's agro or E. coli, you can smell it. Oh, the, <laughs> the difference. How did you electroporate it? How did um, you open it? Yeah, so I will show, remind me, and when we go down the hall, how does it show smell? you the machine that we use. <laughs> so the bacteria goes into um, a, a little vial, and then we put the plasma DNA in there, and then it goes into Should what's be. called an electrolyte. So those are the colonies. And then, do any of you have time restrictions? Because, I mean, no. I'd be happy to just not rush through all this and just take a lot and show you a lot more, so that's great. At least the students always have to go off to something. So so we'll take the time and I'll show you where the electrolyte yes, is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And how we do that. And what happens is when we apply the electrical charge, uh, the can, pores and the bacteria how does open, it and then we'll map the pores. So can I try it? Yes. The, 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 the this membrane, one. The so this is the, the colony. Yes. Yes. And this is the... There is, a, there is a method that you can yeah. do it at the hot pole when there's a chemical. Yeah. And and this yeah. We've always been doing this electrical. Yeah. Yeah. This one is a Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I'll, I'll show Here. that to you. Just remind me. I'll show it to you. Okay. So that's the agrobacterium. And we spin it. We put it in a tube. We spin it down. We get a pellet of bacteria. We resuspend that in a, in a uh, plant culture medium because this has really high salts. And plant material is very sensitive to high salt, so we have to remove this bacterial culture medium um, before we put the plant material in there. And for tomato, um, as I mentioned, we're using cotyledon pieces from germinated seedlings. Now these are old, I just grabbed this off the discard pile, because um, sometimes I drop them and then they get messed up and people aren't happy with me. <laughs> so, I can stuff them. But, um, so we take the seeds, and I'll pass this around, you can pass it around take a look at it. We take the seeds and we treat those with um, leach and uh, ethanol because they're on a sucrose medium and if we didn't do that the fungus and bacteria would grow mm -hmm. and then the plants germinate and then after six to eight days uh, it's a really fine window uh, we want to get them before the first true leaves start to emerge and the reason for that is because we found that the cotyledon pieces if they go much longer <coughs> than that they don't regenerate plants as well as when they're older so we really found that that's like the most efficient um, age to be able to use them um, for, for the transformation of the culture. So we can pass those around. And some of the other um, group asked me, well, why can't you just germinate them in soil? Sure you could. Those. But then, because they're in soil and they might be in a greenhouse or a growth so chamber, so they can grow well in soil in here, you then would have to take the cotyledons and treat the cotyledons with bleach or ethanol. And they're a lot more sensitive, you know, they really get damaged easily. So it's much easier to use seeds. Plus, we work with so many different tomato genotypes. Um, some groups do use leaves for plants if they're using the same genotype, but we use so many different ones, it's just easier to use seeds. It's more shaking and scoop. Yeah, it's the most common one. But, you know, really the choice of salts can make a big difference. And, the success or failure of a particular plant species. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
so this is actually a control. It didn't go through the agrobacterium. But you can see how much they've expanded, you know, because they're very thin. And then we put them on the medium and we cut them. We cut them in half. Um, and you can see how big they've got oh, okay. on there. So, and, um, so you can pass it around. So we, can, we take those cotyledon pieces. Cotyledon. Yeah. Cotyledon pieces. It's the two leaves. Two leaves. Yes. yes. They have cut them now. They look as big as you can okay. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you put them on the medium, they just start to expand on the medium. Okay. And then, um, let's see. So this infection was done on um, September 2nd. So the infection was done on September 2nd. And this is actually a transformation. And you can see that the plants um, are coming off. September 2nd. Yes. Yeah, September 2nd. This is a, they're not the same experiment because that one's newer. And then once the plants start to get bigger, we put them in these boxes. It's still immersion yeast food medium, same medium that's in the plates. But as they get bigger, they need more room. Yeah. So we see that they're in the plates, they really get all the wash them. That's a good question. So, oops, so the infection was done in July. Um, so this is where, so right now we're just waiting for the plants to grow up some more so that we can take cuttings and put them in the and put them on rooting. So they'll go from here. So the one below that's agar, is that an agar nutrient medium? It is. Okay. Yeah, so that's again nursery school. Um, zeatin is mm -hmm. the plant growth regulator, a mm -hmm. cytokiner. So there's zeatin in that medium. The gelling agent is called agar gel. All right. um, and you have growth hormones too? Yeah, yeah zeatin. Yeah. Say tokinin. Yeah, zeatin. C E A T I N. Zeatin. Yeah. And then they, um, when the plants get bigger, we put them into um, a test tube to okay. root. So you can see the really nice yeah. ones on there. Mm -hmm. it's we're using magenta boxes for rooting, but mm -hmm. we find that, you know, we get really nice but, growth. But and this plant, you can't directly plant it, transfer it into the soil, right? We could. You yeah. could? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it would survive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We could. So what we would do is we would um, take them out of the test tube, wash off all the medium because it has sugar in it. And if we didn't do that, bacteria and fun fungi would grow. So we'll wash that off, put it into soil, and then we cover it to mm -hmm. make sure... To get the temperature, that's Yeah, okay. so we cover it because, you know, it's like, look at all the humidity in there, you can see the moisture. And the cuticle on the leaves don't develop very well, and the stomates are open in there. And if we just put them in soil and we didn't cover them with something, they would just drop them. do you think we could go and you said you have to So, so right now, all of our material just goes into the greenhouse. We have to do the field trials, yeah. But with potato, um, we did have a field trial with potato, and it would go into the greenhouse for a month before it would get put into the field. What kind of potato? Yep. So yeah. we, so, so for, not, yeah, not sweet potato, but we've, but we've done a little bit um, So mm -hmm. for potato, we had a project with lake light resistance that we put in the field. Um. And um, I have a recent project where we're looking at nutritional quality to improve, to look at vitamin A, or B carotene in potatoes. And so mm -hmm. looking at the uh, okay. uh, Bangladesh uh, body is working with lip light resistance for Pardon? For ge genetically modified lip light resistance, LDR potatoes. For potato, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just the. Gems, a yeah. Perfect. Are some of these ones gem? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah. Everything that we're doing is genetic. You mentioned earlier about the beta carotene genes. Where do you get that? Is that from daffodils, from rice, or from So maize? what we're doing is these are um, actually, with well, the project that we have, it's looking at turning off a gene, beta carotene hydroxylase, mm -hmm. which causes a buildup. So we're not introducing a gene okay. so much as we are just... It's turning yeah, off turning a off gene. Oh, okay. Silencing a gene. Silencing a gene. Yeah, right. so, which is naturally present in the potato. Mm -hmm. All right. the leaves, we'll cut the stems, and that's what we infect with the agrobacterium. 
Um, and then they go through the same process of tomato. I don't have any that are really So how young is that plant you're holding? This the one, one there? The, yeah. Start out this small. There's no date mm -hmm. on these. There's no date. All right. So I would say that's about five weeks old. Five weeks old. Mm -hmm. That's about five weeks old. And this is probably one week old. It's small. Yeah. Mm, it's still tiny. Does it have roots? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, the roots are ready. All right. So what we'll do is because of this, mm -hmm. it's actually a stem cutting. So we'll take a cutting that has one leaf and we'll cut the leaf off and then we put it into the medium and that axillary bud is what pushes and shoots out and makes the plant. So every every five to six weeks we'll go ahead and we'll make new plants out of the soil. So take your time and pass this around. And again, immersion is for medium. Um, no hormones in that. They root readily. How many mediums actually you uh, you are quite particularly? Oh wow, a lot. Because we have so many different species that we have. Like yeah, you said, the potato, yep. tomato, grape. Some of our grass species, um, so, and they all have their own unique formulations that we need. Yeah. 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 First, and that took a really long time. Uh, and right now we're at the point where we have really good preliminary okay. data that we transfer mm -hmm. Now we can start introducing genes of interest. And we're using AT for those? Pardon? Are you using AT for those? For the for the 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 yeah, we're using our yeah. yeah. And it's going to be a lot. We're going to try CRISPR. How many points on the